For most of you, I don't know if you all know. This is my math. Um, but we're on Facebook Live every Saturday at 7 p.m. We have not missed one Saturday since we've been, uh, if you will, isolated, as much as I can be isolated. Um, today we are, we, we couldn't go live, so what I'm doing is we're recording it on YouTube, which we do every week, and on the camera, so I will share that on Facebook as soon as I get in the car. Okay, just to let you know, we've been here every week. Every week we've been here for you. So, I am so grateful to live in this now moment, because look at this now moment right here. I, I'm just so incredibly thankful that each one came out and joined us. Whatever it looks like. And in, in video land, they'll join us too. But right now, we're here. And I can feel the energy of each and every person. It's beautiful. So the inspirational talk for today is the power of perception. I think it's really applicable to these times. As most of the talks I give are applicable, but not completely focused on what's going on. But we live in this real world, so what we think is real anyway. So we're going to get into this, and a lot of the talk comes from a book called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. It's a book that I've used before, and it just feels like this is the time to use that book again. Very powerful book. So some of the key points in that book are, are we turning an impediment or challenge into a chance for greater empowerment? Are we turning an obstacle into an opportunity to grow bigger in God? A misfortune into good fortune? A complication into conscious awareness? This talk is about taking what is and perceiving it in an empowering way, one that serves our highest good. So I invite you to have something in your mind. We're gonna bring the challenges to the table here this morning, and we're gonna turn them around. Uh, we're going to. So I invite you to have something in mind that feels like a challenge or an obstacle. I don't think it's a stretch. I'm sure you can find one. And if not, then enjoy uh, Nirvana. But right now, we're going to have a real life, a real life, uh, we, when you have that real life situation, we're going to make a shift by doing this, turning from being an impediment to a place of empowering ourselves, from an obstacle to our path and an opportunity that allows us to see who we really are from what you currently see and I currently see as misfortune into good and no, not just good, great good that is unfolding for each and every one of us. From a complicated, from a complication into a real true expansion in your consciousness. And we absolutely, without a doubt, have the ability, each and every one of us, it's not that one person can do this, we each and every one of us can do this. In the words of religious science founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, in How to Use Science of Mind, he says this, we know that conditions are not things in themselves. Remember that. We know that all conditions are fluidic. They flow in and out, back and forth with thought. We convert the condition into states of thought and bringing a higher inward awareness to bear upon them, convert them into new conditions. No matter how impossible, he writes, any situation may seem or how difficult the solution of any problem may appear we hold to the idea that spirit has no problems. There are no impossible situations. And that is a great affirmation. There are, first of all, there's nothing wrong in the mind of the divine, nothing. And second of all, there is nothing that is 
impossible. And as we've done before, we break down that word to I am possible, because each and every one of us is possible in every condition and situation we find ourselves in. We are not limited. We are not. We know that spirit has no problems and that there are no impossible situations and that we bring a higher inner awareness to bear upon them. We cover them. We convert them. We don't cover them. <laughs> we convert them. That's what we do. And so, are you ready to do this? Yes. Oh, it's so great to have people. <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I have to stop right here and say thank you to uh, Steve Edgerton for being the setup person. My whole house converts into Joyful Gathering Spiritual Center with banners, the logo, everything, blacked out windows, lights coming at me. The audio, the sound production, the, everything to bring those Saturday night, Saturday night live from Joyful <laughs> Gathering um, events to everyone who's on social media. They're live. And also then they're on YouTube for those of you not on social media. So I want to just say thank you to him for that. So here we go. According to Ryan Holiday, moving from impediment to empowerment is a discipline, discipline of three steps. One, it begins with how we look at our specific problems our attitudes our, or our approach. Two, when it moves to the energy and creativity with which we actively turn them into opportunities and finally, it includes the cultivation and maintenance of an inner will that gives us strength and fortitude to handle, to handle whatever life gives us, to know that life does not happen to us. It happens for us, even in a pandemic. It's happening for us. It's a, it's a minor shift, but it's major. It's major, it brings us right out of victim consciousness, right out of that mode. Those three interdependent and interconnecting disciplines could be boiled down to three words, just three words. Perception, action, and will. Perception, action, will. So this thing in front of you, this issue, that plane is not an obstacle. This frustrating, unfortunate, problem, problematic, challenging problem preventing you from doing what you want to do, what if? What if you looked at it and perceived it as something that isn't actually so bad? That you could really make it work for you? What if you realized that something embedded inside of it, the issue, or inherent and in act, is actually there to benefit you? How would you show up around that? It is not the obstacle that matters, but rather our perception of it. That makes all the difference. How are we perceiving ourselves? And especially during these times, how are we perceiving ourselves? We do have control over our perception and therefore our lives. What matters is how we see and understand what occurs around us. And more importantly, what we decide those events mean to us. And this is what Ryan Holiday writes. Seeing properly everything that happens, be it an economic crash, a personal tragedy, a movement for racial equality, is a chance to move forward even if it is on a bearing that we did not anticipate. And I think we're all on bearings that we did not uh, anticipate. But the seen properly part of that is the key to that statement. Holiday wrote something that jumped out for me. 
he wrote that just because your mind tells you something is awful or terrible or an obstruction to your good or otherwise negative doesn't mean you have to agree. You don't have to agree. If you're a person that watches the TV, you know I've been saying this for many years, you know, turn it off, unless you're watching a good show, but turn it off and what is being said on the, on the news and in all of those articles that I read articles is all fear-based. And I choose to see a higher quality with that. I choose to do that. And you can do. Likewise, just because other people say that something is hopeless or crazy or broken to pieces doesn't mean it is. We can perceive it a different way. You, we, you and I, get to decide what story we tell ourselves about any given situation. And that is the power of perception. We get to choose how we look at the challenge. And the fact is, we can't change most obstacles. They're there, right? And that's where the beautiful serenity prayer comes in. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, or said in another way. God grant me the serenity to accept the person I cannot change, the courage to change the person I am, and I can, and the wisdom to know that that person is me. We can't change anyone else but within ourselves, the me, the you. So we can't change most obstacles themselves. They just are, they're part of the equation, it's set. But we can change the way we perceive them. And that can make all the difference to us. And Ernest Holmes writes, if we believe in suffering, we shall suffer. Life responds to us in the way we approach it. We should choose that which we wish to embody and by constant attention to it, take on all its characteristics. Let us choose to be identified with power, with love, with beauty, with peace and happiness. Let us identify ourselves with abundance and with success. Now we read those words. I'm always reading words because we are still in a class online, a Zoom class, great class. And we read words like that and we shake our heads. Yeah, that's me. I am, I'm loving to choose this, to identify with power and love and peace and beauty and success and abundance in every way. Well, I'm going to choose, I'm choosing to align with that. And then I ask you, can you choose that perception toward any challenge that might appear in your life or that you brought here this morning? Oh, you mean that challenge? It's like we compartmentalize things. Yeah, that challenge. This issue. Well, that's a different story. You know, we can, we can affirm all of those wonderful qualities when everything's going just smoothly the way we want it to go, of course. And mostly, life doesn't happen that way. So we can change our perception. And there is where the discipline comes in. Do we have the discipline to choose our perception or the obstacles or to listen to all the stuff that goes on in our head and even sometimes in our hearts? If we can, we're all, this is where all the difference is made. And I'm gonna give you a short example, and I'm not gonna keep you here too long, because the sun is beating down. <laughs> so here's a short example of, of what that is. It comes right out of Ryan Holiday's book. The Obstacle is the Way. George Clooney spent his first years in Hollywood getting rejected in auditions. That's hard to believe right now. 
And he went into these auditions wanting the producers and the directors to like him. But they didn't. And it hurt. And he blamed the system for not seeing how really good he was. Has anyone ever felt like that? And we bump up against an obstacle? Is anyone feeling that right now? It's all within. You don't have to answer it out loud. You just hold it in your consciousness. After doing it that way, this is how he shifted his perception. After doing it that way, unsuccessfully for some time, he decided to perceive his role differently. He thought about the whole process of making a movie or a television show and realized that casting is actually an obstacle for the producers. They needed to find the right person for the role. And they were always hoping that the next person who walked in for that audition would be the person. And he realized, George Clooney realized, that auditions were a chance to solve their problem, not his. Now, that's looking at an obstacle in quite a different way. So he decided to be their solution. I love it. He wasn't going to be somebody that grovels for a shot to, to get a part in a movie or a TV role. Rather, he would be someone that walked in with something special to offer. He, had, he was the answer to their prayers, not the other way around. And that was what he began projecting in his auditions. Not exclusively his acting skills, but that he was the man for the job. That he understood what the casting director and producers were looking for in a specific role. And that he could deliver it in each and every situation. That difference made all the difference. His obstacle became his way. So the question for us this morning is around your current issue, challenge, obstacle is what can I change and what can't I change? You can change your perception, which is a combination of, in case you didn't know, thoughts, judgments, emotions, approach, creativity, attitude, desires, direction, and determination. This is your playing field right there. That's your playing field. Everything there is fair game. But what can't you change? Well, everything else. The economy, the pandemic, and a lot of circumstance related to it, other people's judgments or decisions, trends, disasters, it goes on. And then there's one other important factor that you cannot change. Uh, this is a good factor you would want to change. You can't change the fact that there is an infinite power of the divine good standing at the ready to be expressed through your life if you just open up and allow it. That spiritual truth is always available to us. It goes nowhere. It is not influenced by anything. And in the divine intelligence that is God, way faster and more expansive than we can ever begin to imagine or comprehend, the obstacle is exactly what is needed for our next growth of consciousness, for our evolution, for our expansion, and that's spiritual truth. And we know the spiritual truth never changes. So, how do we shift our perception to a place where this spiritual truth can be alive in and through us? We're gonna do it right now. So bring an issue to mind that you might have. And you're, I want you to repeat this after me. And you are talking to that challenge, that obstacle. There's an energy in this universe. Everybody. There's an energy in this universe. Way bigger than you. Way bigger than me. Talking to the problem. The solution is here for me. 
The solution is here for me. Because I am at the center. I am at the center. Of the mind of God. The mind of God. Right where I am. Right where I am. The wisdom of the universe is. The wisdom of the universe is. Answers to every question are accessible. Answers to every question are accessible. Say it like you feel it. <laughs> right now. Because right where I am is God. Because right where I am is God. I know this obstacle is the way for my good. I know this obstacle is the way for my good. No great fortune. No great fortune. That's it. It's not good. It's great fortune. And we have spoken the truth together here this morning, and I'm so thankful that we did, because I know it is manifesting right now by the universal law, and I end this talk by saying, and so it is. And so it is. Woo!